Well, in a country where hip hop music is illegal and criticism of the government can land you the death sentence, an Iranian rapper has become a symbol of resistance with a growing international campaign to save his life. Nassim Kadim is here to tell us all about it. Great to see you. Mm. Just tell us who is this rapper? What's his message? So Tumaj Salehi is a very prominent rapper in Iran and he gained prominence by basically um, calling out the oppression that the Iranian people face, calling out the human rights abuses. His music spread underground and via social media and he became very popular and a symbol of resistance. But this also made him a target of Iran's regime. So he's been arrested numerous times. The last time he was arrested was 2023 uh, and then he was arrested again recently. He was tortured during his last time in prison uh, and uh, now they've issued him with the death penalty and there's an international campaign to try and save his life. I spoke to Nick Williams, he's a campaigner at the Index on Censorship, so they've just released a petition with uh, more than 100 artists including mu musicians like Sting and Col Coldplay that are calling for his release. Here's some of what Nick had to say. Because of his solidarity and, and allyship with women, the, the courageous, brave women who took the streets after Masa Amini's death, and because of his prominence and possibly to make an example of him, he was he was arrested and held, often in solitary confinement, um, until he was sentenced to over six years in prison. Why was he issued with the death? penalty. So uh, when he was released on bail in 2023, the Supreme Court had found flaws in that sentence against him and so he was released on bail. He came out and then he released a video documenting the torture that he faced in prison and soon after that he was re-arrested. Re they issued him with new charges uh, and then this year the death penalty. Um, so it actually goes against that initial Supreme Court decision and this was a lower revolutionary court that went against that Supreme Court decision. So his lawyers are appealing on that ground. Uh, but, you know, uh, human rights groups are really worried he could be executed. Um, I spoke to Amnesty International's international issues campaigner, Nikita White. Here's what she had to say. What we've documented in the last year is an increase of nearly 50% in executions in Iran. Over 850 people were executed last year. And at Amnesty International, we think this is really because the Iranian authorities are using the death penalty, are using executions as a tool of repression. They're trying to crush dissent by executing protesters, and they executed at least seven protesters last year. There are at least eight, including Tamaj, who are currently sentenced to death. And all of this is happening, Nassim, as the Iranian government takes harsher action against women who don't adhere, for instance, to the country's compulsory hijab laws. That's correct. So thousands of women have been arrested. Um, oh, sorry, thousands of women have, have had their cars confiscated, have um, been denied access to public places like businesses, like public transport uh, and even education in some cases. Uh, and this has come as the government's also proposed new laws that would actually increase fines against women who don't veil that say that unveiling is akin to nudity uh, and there's really a lot of uh, you know uh, repression of women going on now so uh, there's calls by the international for the international community to do more to support these women to support the protesters uh, you'll recall in Australia there was a recent Senate inquiry that made uh, many recommendations one of that was to list the IRGC which is the military arm of Iran's government as a terrorist organisation. Uh, so there's a lot more the international community can do to support these protesters. Thank you so much for coming in and telling us about the story. Thank Thanks you.